I'm cleaning up my Airbnb because the people who stayed here last night made a huge mess. They stayed here for one night and they, they trashed the place. There's food everywhere, laundry everywhere. I'm doing multiple loads of laundry. They dyed their hair and left purple dye in the bathroom sink. They left the fridge just filled with stuff that I haven't even had a chance to empty out yet. It reminded me of what it was like when I was a kid. You see, now I'm a millionaire real estate investor. I got a 90s themed Airbnb. As you can see, I'm sitting right here with my boy, Neil. I am the one, I, that's me. I am, I, I am a man 33 years in the making. I am the one and absolutely a catch. Ladies, you don't need to catch them all, you can just have me. So I wanna talk about the problem with poverty and how poverty begets poverty and how poverty and welfare are a trap. You see, I grew up in poverty. I grew up on Section 8. I grew up on food stamps. I grew up on government assistance. The people that I ran into last night was a mom and two kids. Now, when they pulled up in their car, it was a beaded, old, busted car, and I wondered, oh, I'm surprised they're on vacation, spending 150 bucks a night to come stay at this Airbnb, but whatever, it's all good. And she had two young kids that she told me about were coming with her. And all night, I could hear the kids running around. I don't really care about the noise. I got my own son. I don't really care if people are noisy in the Airbnb. But I could tell that the kids were kind of just making a ruckus. Mom wasn't controlling them that much. And I guess, I guess that she was probably a single mom. I didn't see any guy with her. She didn't tell me about any guy coming. And I happened to see him as they were leaving in the car. Didn't look like there was a man. Now, I remember what it was like to be raised by a poor, broke, single mom who ended up becoming a stripper and then a prostitute. Wasn't a great childhood. And I want to explain why I know and how I uniquely know that poverty just leads to more poverty. It's a trap that's been set up for you by the ruling class. I don't want this to be the way that it is, and I wish that it was different, but unfortunately, I don't know how it's going to change or if it's going to change. So when I come into this unit and I walk in here and I see this absolute mess, I say, how could anybody treat these things so poorly? I mean, clearly, if you're an adult, you should be able to recognize how rare it is to have a cassette tape collection in the year 2023. And I can see that they'd moved all of the cassettes and unfortunately broken the cassettes. It's not supposed to come apart like that. Unfortunately, some of the cassettes were busted. I come into the kitchen. There's dishes everywhere. I open up the stove and there's still just a brand new giant cookie sheet pan filled with cinnamon rolls. There's cinnamon roll bread on top. There's banana bread everywhere. There's a giant plate of cookies just sitting on the table. I always give complimentary sodas to the people who stay at my Airbnb. I like to put water, soda, coffee, snacks, and things like that out for people. And I was surprised when in one night between a mom and her two kids, they managed to drink all 12 sodas that I leave as complimentary. And then I find another container for 12 more Dr. Peppers. I'm like, holy cow, how much soda do they drink? And then as I was taking the garbage out, I found another container of Dr. Pepper. I filled three full-size trash bags full of wasted food as I walked it out to the trash can that they didn't use, and they just left it. Now, if somebody leaves something unopened, usually I'll go ahead and take it. Like if there's an unopened thing of ice cream, I'll be like, oh, sweet, I scored some free ice cream. There was eggs. There was all this unopened stuff just sitting on the counters. It needed to be refrigerated, and it wasn't. Totally wasted. Completely wasted. And it just reminded me how when I was younger, how if you don't work for the money that you get, you don't appreciate it. You'll never learn to value it. This is why people live paycheck to paycheck. This is why it's so hard to escape the trap of poverty. I remember living on food stamps and at the end of the month, every single month, we would run out of food stamps. And the last week of the month was awful because you were hungry. You didn't have anything to eat. You were scraping the bottom of the pantry, looking for something, surviving off cereal, hot dogs, and maybe some tuna if you were lucky. And then the first of the month came and it was like manna falling from the sky. The EBD card charged back up. You could go to the Walmart. You go to the grocery store. You could buy a bunch of groceries. Times were good again. And you relive that cycle over and over and over again. And for some people like me when I was a kid, I learned to hate relying on the government. I learned to hate being poor. But so many other people end up stuck in a cycle of poverty. 
They never appreciate the dollars they're given. They will buy things that end up just getting wasted because it isn't their money. They didn't work for it. I wouldn't, I would be pissed if I left a thing of eggs out, even though eggs are four bucks for a dozen or four bucks for 18. I would be pissed if I'd put 12 eggs to waste because I worked for that money and I spent the money on it. If I saw a bunch of cinnamon rolls, which I love, just in the oven, complete, like it looked like one or two had been eaten and the rest of them were just there. Not only was I pissed that they were caked onto the cookie sheet that now I had to scrape and ruin the finish on just to get the cinnamon rolls off. So I ruined this cookie sheet and I also freaking wasted all the cinnamon rolls. That's food. I grew up, my entire childhood was just being hungry. Like if I had to describe an emotion that I had as a teenager, it's a tie between horny and hungry. Honestly, not much has changed. <laughs> but... but the fact is, you just don't appreciate things when they're not yours, when you didn't pay for it, when you didn't have to earn it. Now, I'm not against single moms. I was raised by one. My heart goes out to any single parent, male or female. I'm a single father myself. But I think that we just do a disservice in this country when we give people free money. And I don't even know. These people might not have been on food stamps. Who knows? I mean, I, they look like they were clearly lower income based on the car, based on the behavior, and because I feel entitled to say that. If you have a certain past to make judgments on certain groups because you're from that group, then damn it, I'm from the group of poverty. I get to talk all the shit I want about broke, poor people. I spent 25 years of my life being a broke, poor person before I got it up out the gutter and got it up out the mud and became a rich millionaire. So I'm going to talk all the shit that I want. But this is what I think we do as a disservice. I'm sitting over here cleaning an Airbnb spending more hours cleaning this Airbnb from a 24 hour stay than I have had to do for people who've stayed here for a week. I never tell people they have a list of chores that they need to do. I never do. It's your vacation. You're here on your time off. I don't want you to feel like you need to do the dishes or you need to change the bedding or you need to do any of that stuff. Just enjoy your time off. Leave me a good review and we'll see you next time. But most people take it upon themselves to tidy up. Maybe they don't do the laundry. They don't do, yeah, I don't care about that. But they usually tidy up. They take the garbage out. They make it look nice in here. They might even sweep or vacuum if I leave the stuff out for them. But I was just baffled when these folks left. And I walked in here and I was like, holy smokes. Holy smokes. How could you do this much in just a 14, 15 hour time frame? It just doesn't even make sense to me. But that's what ended up happening. And so... I yell at my neighbors out this open window right here. He's looking up at me like, what, dude, are you talking to me? <laughs> uh, poverty is very dangerous. Let me get back to the topic at hand. Let me get back to the topic at hand, okay? As somebody who grew up unbelievably poor, I thank God every day for that blessing because I really truly think it was a blessing. Most people who end up growing up poor don't learn from it the lessons that I did. It's funny, the little neighborhood kid just came over and asked if he could do some yard work. And I remembered myself when I was 10 years old and I wanted to buy Pokemon cards. And I knew because I was poor, we would never have the money for Pokemon cards. Would never have it. The only way I was going to get those cards is if I myself went and asked to mow yards and do lawn work for other people and could get the money to save it up. I had to buy my own school supplies as a little kid. I got my first job at 14 years old because I hated being poor. And to this day, I hate poverty. I'm not afraid of it, but I hate it. I don't like the feeling of helplessness. But so many people, for whatever reason, don't draw the same conclusions that I did. And I don't know exactly why. I don't know if it was because I just grew up listening to a little bit of Dave Ramsey on the radio, maybe, or something in a religious background, or maybe I saw it on TV, but I just always knew at a young age that if I worked hard enough, I truly believed in the American dream that I could accomplish the things that I wanted and become successful. And I've always had this picture in my mind that I would be a very powerful, successful, wealthy, accomplished individual. And I know that that's so arrogant that it borders on narcissism, but it's true. I believe in myself and I've thought I was going to be able to be a rich, successful, important person my entire life. And so if I'm going to make that happen, I have to be the one to make that happen. And so I did not fall trapped to this poverty cycle, to this debt cycle, to this poor life choice cycle. Well, Definitely made a poor life choice, one or two. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a single dad. <laughs> Love my son. That's not who I was talking about. But I made a bad choice. Nobody gets out of life scot-free, all right? You'd be lucky if you get out of life alive. But, <laughs> but I didn't make some of the, the generational poverty mistakes that many people make. And I'm grateful for that. And so my advice and my encouragement to you would be to try to teach financial lessons to those around you. I recognize after reading a book like The Millionaire Next Door that 
one of the worst things that can happen to a child is have their parents be wealthy. I try very, very hard to make it seem like I'm broke to my son all the time. Now, buddy, we don't got money. You can't have it. Sorry. I tell him no all the time because I don't want him to grow up to be an entitled little brat who can't figure out how to make life work on his own because he was given everything. And that's what the, the thesis behind that book is. One of the main points of that book is you ruin your children when you buy stuff for them and give them things. You, you ruin them. They have no chance at success if you facilitate financially their lives. And so I was able to break it for myself. I'm trying to move that forward to my son. And I would say for you, you might have to look out there. Who out there in your neighborhood? What little kid's going to come knock on the door? Can you mentor? Who in your life is looking to improve their life and may be receptive to the message of you can do better? You can be financially free. And you know what? Even if you're not financially free like me and become a millionaire at a young age and own a bunch of real estate across a bunch of different states, even if that isn't the goal, th there's still nobility and having a nine to five job and, and working towards a retirement and investing in a Roth IRA and a 401k, that is still an admirable aspiration. My son's out there playing in the yard right now. It's cold. I thought he was inside. Get out of the puddle. Get out of the puddle. Stop getting your shoes wet. Go inside, you bum. I'll be there in a minute. Ah, I'll leave that in there as an outtake. I could teach him not to waste money, but this spaz can't freaking keep his clothes clean or his shoes clean. He's literally just jumping in the puddle. It's 40 degrees outside. He's in a t-shirt. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> I think it's important to try to leave good messages and teach a, po teach a positive life outlook and lesson to the next generation. And that might be your own kids. That might be the neighbor kids. That might just be a friend who's younger than you at work. I aspire to be great. I want to be great. I want my kid to be great. I want you and your kids and your families to be great. I want you to impress and inspire people around you. I want you to live a fantastic, motivating, inspirational life. Because if you become the person I know you can be, and if I can be capable of becoming the person that I dream of and want to be, then maybe we can fix some of these absolutely barbaric, catastrophic things that are going on in the world right now. There's wars, rumors of wars, discontent, anger. We pit the working class against each other. It's it's black versus white. It's poor versus rich. It's male versus female. Any way we can, we just fight and fight and fight to keep us all distracted instead of ever bothering to realize that it's the elites who are ruling over us who just want us to tear each other down and never pay attention to the fact that we outnumber and 10 million to one. And if we could just kick them off their high horse, maybe we would realize that we have more in common with the poor people in every other country across the planet. And we wouldn't look at each other as such enemies. We wouldn't look at people across the political aisle with such hate, discontent, and, and frustration all the time. We need to figure out how to come together and do a little bit better for ourselves and for each other. And with that, I got to go join Dion on the live. So I'll talk to you guys later. Appreciate you as always for watching. We'll see you next time.